Mic check. Welcome to Midweek Critique, everyone. Hello, hello. Mic check, mic check. Wow. All right, midweek critique. Let's go. Let's do this. We got a lot to talk about, a lot to say. Let me do this. Mic check. <laughs> Boom. Good to go. Hey, are we um, do we have any delay going on? Is there a delay on the mouth? Does my mouth look delayed at all? Let me know. Um, we have a new camera angle today. I'm trying this angle out, the old school angle of the, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but this angle, rather than the over the head, I'm not a big fan of the over the head anymore. I thought it was so cool when we first started doing it. Bring me my motherfucking bait, boys. Oh, Brian Forte with the seven month subscription. Thank you so much. Round of applause to everyone who subscribed. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I was a huge fan of the overhead shot, but now that I look at it, I think it's better when it's like in like high definition 4K. Otherwise, I think this looks better, just vis more visually appealing. We'll see, though. We'll see how it goes. That's what I got going on so far. 
All right, good. Audio is good. Nice, nice, nice. Hello, Twitch. I love you all. Hello, YouTube. I love you all. Let's go. Let's get into it. We have three recipes here. I'm at, I'm just out of it today. Let's see. We have three recipes. They're ready to go. They're ready to be mixed up, and we're going to talk about my new mod here, which I'm excited to talk about here. One second. I'm just unprepared right now. Okay. Let's pull these up real quick. All right, so for today's midweek critique, remember Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern, Twitch and YouTube and Facebook, we go live and I review your recipes. I review, um, I critique them as well. I don't just review them, I critique them. I try to give my input on them. It's a good way to get more recipes out there, right? It's a good way to just like let people know about more recipes. And it's also a great learning tool. The best way to learn how to mix is to the best way to get better at mixing is to have your work critiqued and to see what you could do better, to see what you know, uh, what what parts of your recipes are lacking, to see things from a different angle. Flavor is subjective, right? But so is music. So is so are movies. So are everything in art is subjective, and yet we still have critics. We still read reviews, right? When we go when we buy a new video game, we want to know what the reviews say. Because there are baseline level things that we all want to know about them. And we also want to know to the reviewers that we watch if they enjoyed it. So you usually try to find someone that your palate or your taste is uh, is similar to. That way, if they like something, there's a good chance that you're probably going to like something. And um, that's what we do here on Midweek Critique on Wednesdays. Okay? Just a quick thanks to any of you guys, gals, who helped me out yesterday on the collective with my Carmel issues. Oh, very nice. Yes, make sure you head over to the Facebook group at Mixers Collective. All right, today's recipes. We have three here. Three brand new submissions. First one is Damp Lion Checkmate White Knight Clone by Don Corleone. The Don Corleone. It looks like a mango, strawberry, icy yogurt, I guess. I'm not exactly sure, but um, Don Corleone sent in the damp fly, and I've never heard of Checkmate White Knight either. So we're going to be reviewing it as less mo less of a clone, more as, you know, on its own merits here. Next, we have Event Horizons, right? Event Horizons by Stir Crazy with absinthe, black currant, mint, red cherry, red licorice. Wait, didn't we already do this one? Didn't we already do this one? And then the other one, Apple Fritter by Baku. Baku, Apple Fritter by Biaco which is a biscuit. It's just like an apple fritter. You know, very simple. Looks very good. Looks very traditional apple pie. I like some getting some traditional recipes in to see if anyone can do anything new with it. All right, let me double check to make sure we didn't uh, do this yet. No, no Angelonis yet. I haven't made my flavor order. There's a few of your guys' recipes that I haven't gotten the... Uh, order in so you guys just waiting on that what is the i'm missing an ingredient that is in one of your that's in that recipe let me make sure that i didn't do this one i don't think i did event horizons stir crazy let me see here maybe i didn't i don't know maybe we looked at it it's hard to keep track because we don't go in order. We don't go in order here. And I'm going to show you guys how to submit your recipes in just a second. I don't think we did this one, so we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, Stir Crazy sent in two recently. The banana split and then that one, right? That's how this works. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh no, those were sent in like three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. 
And let me see. Take me to the sea. Yeah, you're literally right on the. You're ri- literally right next. I don't have the anise. I guess is the only thing that I don't have, which I thought I had, but I don't have it. That's the only one that I'm missing from your recipe. And then we also have. Yeah, I have yours from like a month ago, and then there's some from three months ago that we still need to get to. Yeah. Yep, you're just going to have to, you guys are just going to have to wait. Don Corleone sent this in a few months ago. Don't worry, we'll get to you. There's another one. It's Gordo's recipe. Gordo's been on the been on the wait list for a long time as well. And he needs Oh yeah, the graham cracker. Okay. All right, this is something I'm going to have to do soon. So I know some of you guys have been waiting. All right. And I don't think... Sir Crazy, what was the last recipe that we had? I feel like we did do you recently. Stir Crazy DIY or die. I'm going to submit mine, probably Caramel Apple RY4. It's not perfect, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Send it in. Send it in as soon as you can. No, maybe not. Okay. Stir crazy. Are you, uh, that doesn't look like you're here yet. No. Yeah. So, so take me to the scene. Gorda are the next ones up. Cause I know you guys have been waiting. I just need to get those ingredients in. And then we also have a few others, but they've already been on the show. So I'm just going to get to them when I get to them. And then, Don Corleone and BK204 are new as well. Okay, so we do have two new ones. All right, let's go. What should we do first? Should we mix first? Or should we talk about the Duke? The Duke. Yes, yeah, spend your points. Get them in. Oh, yeah, let me talk about how to submit your recipe. So if you want to submit your recipe for review, you can do it, you can do it in a few ways. I'm kind of opening it up a little bit more. Some recipes, some weeks, we're just going to pick random ones, right? It really just, it's at my discretion, to be honest. Just whenever the recipes go up, if they fit the theme of the show, if you're new, you get precedence, right? If you haven't been reviewed, you take precedence. Depends on where the ingredients are at. If you're using mom and pops, you know, caterpillar, chow, or whatever, chances are it's going to take a while for you to get on the show. Try not to use ingredients that I have to order one from one company out in fucking bumblefuck because you're probably going to take a while before I get to it. I'll get to it, but it's going to take a while for me to get to that. Try to use like, you know... um, um, p- pretty well known flavorings that are easy to get. Um, and you can email me, send it to my email, rate my recipe at DIY or die vaping.com. You can send it through your points, which is the best way to do it. So if you watch on Twitch, you accumulate points and all you have to do is type in exclamation store. It's going to shoot you a link to your chat. It's going to shoot you a link in the chat. So you can see right down here, it's going to shoot you this link. You click on that, and then you just redeem your points from Critique Recipe. It's a 1,000 points, so all you have to do is watch a couple shows, redeem item. You're going to put your link right in the message, and that's it. And that's all you got to do, and then you put it into the queue. I, I, I really enjoy it if you have, like, if you write something about your recipe, don't just give me the recipe. Put a little something in there. That way I can have some context to the recipe so I kind of know what I'm looking for in my re- recipe or when I'm vaping it. And um, and that's pretty much it. It's a very simple process. You can email, or you can also Discord to me. So if you're over on the Discord, you can just shoot it to me and say, "Hey, can you put this on the queue?" And then it just goes up. It's all up on the queue. Okay. All right. And there's no skipping the queue. You can't donate money to try to skip the queue. That's something that someone tried to do previously. Uh, that doesn't. I mean, I, I mean, I could work, but <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna open up money to get your it's just whenever i get to it i can't it's too difficult to really you know um keep things in order 
with this type of stuff because there's so many different ingredients that I have to constantly get. So it's just whenever I get to it, I get to it. And new people, if you haven't been on the show before, you will take precedence. That's really the only rule. And you can submit anything you like. Anything you like. It could be the worst recipe. In fact, I would I would recommend you submit your worst recipe because it's a good way to learn. Um, now, of course, if you want, you know, if you really want like a good sort of, if you want to take something out of it, then send something that you really enjoy or you're really trying to get, but you're not quite there yet and you just need another pair of eyes on it. That's the best way to kind of take critiques, you know, just to get a different set of eyes or nose, I guess, rather. All right. I sent one that I want some advice on. Yes, uh, I thought we did yours already. Am I losing my mind? I saw your name on the list, though, so I probably didn't get to it. All right. I guess we can do... Let's just talk about the Duke, because there's really not too much to talk about here. So I wanted a dripper. I found that I vape way too much with a squonk. I love squonking, and there's nothing like... There's nothing I want more than a good regulated squonk device. This is the squonk that I've been using for like, I don't know, the last year or so. Um, the Aegis, what is this called? The Geek Vape Aegis Squonk Legend Squonk. And I mean, you can see it's got cracks in it, right? It's it's all beat up. It's all scratched up on the screen. I don't know if you can really see that. But it's all like scratched up on the screen. Cracks everywhere. I mean, I beat the shit out of this thing. So this part here, which is the ring to take the battery out, it's become loose because I, you know, I, this is a bad idea, right? This is a pretty bad idea because when you open it to unscrew your battery, you start to torque it. And what that does is just naturally loosen that joint right there. So now all it takes is a, little flick and then it falls out like that so there's been many times where i put the mod down and it kind of tips over because it's <laughs> just because that thing is out like that's like a little fucking kickstand so that's a little bit annoying but nonetheless it still works the fucking thing still works it's still kicking and this is why i've really enjoyed these aegis mods they're cheap and they're durable they 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 last me, man. They really do last me. I fucking destroy these things, and they really do last me. The problem, though, is with a squonk, I vape a lot. I find myself when I'm playing Path of Exile, and I'm running through maps, and I'm not even thinking. I'm just vaping away, and I'm killing mobs. Vaping away, and I'm killing mobs. With a dripper, it I... I find that I notice myself taking way longer breaks, way longer breaks because I have to actively take my hands off the thing to drip it onto the mod and then I can vape. And I just find myself naturally slowing my vaping down. So I said, I'm going to get myself a nice dripper, something I spend money on, something that looks good. Something that has like a nice feel to it that has a nice powerful regulated chip and something that is a 21700. The Duke landed on my lap and I couldn't be more happy with the Duke so far. So this is by Vicious Ant. I don't really know too much about this company. Oops, sorry. I don't really know too much about this company other than they make pretty high-end mods. Let me find out the price on this. Um, it's pretty expensive. I've had my Aegis Legend for two years. Hell yeah, man. Hell fucking yeah. That's awesome. Let's see here. This is the... Let's go to regulated mods. Duke 2 Desert Tan, which matches the P320. And there's one left. It's three fifty, so it's three hundred fifty dollars, which is a considerable price, right? It's not a cheap mod, but in the world of high end, it's not that outrageous. Um, and what's nice, one of the biggest reasons why I bought this, and I think other high end modders should take note, it's available on their website. You just go on it. It tells you this is how many are left, and you can buy it. 
There's not a there. You know what I mean? There's no bullshit that you have to do to find and pick up this mod. You don't have to go on wait list. I understand that they sell out really quickly, but um, I just you know after years of doing that, I, you just get sick and tired. You just want to go, and if it's available, then I can buy it. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I went with this. Uh, believe it or not. Also, I love the desert sand color. I think this de desert sand color is phenomenal. I mean, it literally is the matching, like, uh, I don't know what's that material called, but it's like the same exact material as the P320. It's really cool. Um, you get this nice little vicious ant bat. I mean, it's a really well nice, uh, uh, a really well made mod. It's a, it's one of these fires, right? Like an old SX mini where you hold it like this and then you fire it with your thumb. I don't, know, I'm not, I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it's comfortable. It's nice. But is it the best? Like, is a trigger a better way? Probably. Like, if this was ribbed and then somehow the chip was on the bottom and then you can just fire it like that, that's probably the most comfortable way. Nonetheless, this is still perfectly fine. Uh, what kind of chip in here? Uh, DNA 75 color chip with a 2170, 2,700 battery, so it'll last a long, long time. It's crazy how much longer a 2,700 lasts compared to an 18,650. And also, I think, because these are newer 2,700s, they're not the best ones. Which ones are these? These are the Molicel, I don't know. They're the Molicel Desert Sand Color. And, um... They're not the best ones, but they're newer. And a lot of my 18650s are a little bit older. They're, they're probably, I probably should replace all of them. And like going through the ages, like I would go through like four of them in a day, four, maybe sometimes even five, depending on how shit the battery is, you know, pushing it at like 60 watts. Nonetheless, I was going through a ton of them where one or two of these will last me all day. You know, it is a DNA. So you do get like a little bit of like, once the battery starts to go, the voltage starts to drop down and then you can run into like check battery issues. So it really wants to make sure that you're not completely killing your battery, which I sometimes think that that kind of sucks. I rather, I rather me just let me kill my battery to me. You know what I mean? Like let, at least, or give me a setting that if I want to drain my battery, then let me just drain the battery. Cause I can just buy another battery, you know? Rather than I know I have to always keep like an extra or two just in case if I do get to that point. Uh, that's something you just don't have to worry about with like those cheaper chips. They just let you kill your battery, which I kind of like a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more, I guess, for me. Um, yeah, overall, really nice. And then this is also really cool. So with the battery... You just push it in and twist. It it's not like how it is on the uh, what's it called? It's not like how it is on the um, Squeevo, where you have to align it perfectly because the threads are so fine that any sort of like imperfect alignment on the battery cap can jam the threads, and then you have to back it out. With this, you just pop it in. There's a little sort of like tab here, so you just kind of twist it, boom, and then you're good to go. And then it meets you with this stupid screen. And then you can get into it and start going. Yeah, pretty nice. Pretty nice. If anyone wants like a really nice dripper, they have them there. What else do they have? They have a bunch of really nice stuff over on Vicious Ant's site. Um, let's see. So there was another one that I was looking at. I don't, it wasn't... Uh, Ooh, that orange is nice too, honestly. Too bad it's not a 2700. I mean, even the cobalt is really nice. Let's see if there's any... Oh, that green is nice too. So you get... I mean, like, they have them on the site. I guess, you know, I guess they're just not in as much demand as some other companies. Uh, maybe because they're not squonks. I would assume maybe that's one of the big reasons why. I never buy it. Single battery, mid-range power. Rather get a 21.7 Kodama. Twenty-one seven hundred Kodama. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna have to look it up. I like these. I like these colors a lot. These, these green ones. 
I could have sworn. Oh, maybe it's the stab woods. So these are really expensive. But they're also, you know, hand spun stabilized wood. And these look like they sell pretty quick. There's still some available. Like you can actually pick these up. And this is a really nice looking mod. 600 bucks for it though. Mm, that's pricey. That's pricey. Is it worth it? I don't know. Oh yeah, uh, one of these right here. One of these type of squonks. That's pricey. I could have sworn it was a different one too. Yeah, yeah. Because when I was looking, I was like, "Damn, do I, do I go with the squonk? Those aren't regulated, though. Do I go with the squonk and go against what I kind of really want? But then again, I do get the more versatility of having the squonk. Like that's pretty fucking nice. Four twenty-five, one left. Wait, what is this? Is this? What exactly is this? Oh, that's the different thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's the Duke. Matches the P320. It's in desert sand. And, um... It feels fucking nice, man. It feels nice. Like, these two together... A nice that's a sexy little combo right there that's a sexy little combo right there you know what i'm saying not bad now i've been talking about getting a billet box so i've been on a billet box hunt i'm still looking to get one but i think what i'm going to do because i'm a billet box virgin i think i'm going to get a dot mod aio first and i'm going to get one of those mission tanks for it I'm just going to get like a decked out dot mod one because I can get them pretty easily and I can get them at a fraction of the price. And I just want to see how I like it because I'm getting conflicting. I'm getting conflicting messages from people. Some people tell me that the flavor is great and that it's a lot better than it's like an RTA. You know what I mean? It's not you're not going to get like Hadley flavor, but it's like an RTA, a good RTA. And then other people have told me that I'm going to hate it. It's completely not worth it. If I don't like the flavor from like a Nord, then there's no point in me getting one. So I'm going to try it out and see with the dot mod AIO to see if I can tolerate having less flavor. Um, I really like the whole dot mod rabbit hole. I love the fact that you can like customize every bit of it. There's like, you know, really cool sort of like uh you know, different parts that you can, I really like that aspect of, of, I mean, that's one of my favorite aspects of vaping and I'm sure it's the same for many of you. So that's kind of why I've been looking at getting one flavor and vapor has kind of been the back seat. I really just want to get one just to kind of have it and to kind of play around with it. But if, if, I mean, if I'm never going to use it, you know what I mean? Then I might as well not even bother. So I'm going to go with the dot mod AIO first, probably with one of those mission tanks because I can get one, and then uh, we'll just kind of go from there. And if I like it, if I find it tolerable, then I'll probably go the billet box route, and I'll need your guys' help in getting one, because they're very difficult to procure. They're difficult to procure. All right, what was that mod that you were saying? A Kodama? I never heard of a Kodama. I know what a Kendama is. Kodama vape mod. Made in the Philippines. Nice high-end mod. Oh, and Asmodis code. Oh my God, they're fucking four hundred dollars. What do you mean to? Unless I'm looking at the wrong one. These ones are you talking about? Oh, are you talking about these? So this is a dual. It's a little too big. But it's a dual twenty-one seven hundred. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you needed more than seventy-five watts, for sure. For sh what? Okay. Uh, for sure need uh if you if you wanted the um if you wanted the um more power then you probably don't you probably need something more than seventy five watts. Single battery mods you need to use higher own builds otherwise you're not. 
mitigating it. MTL is great for single bats. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty low, actually. This is like a 0.2. This is a 0.15. Pretty low. It's at 50 watts, so I'm not really pushing it too much. But I did build this pretty low. Uh, and I can put, I can, I mean, 0.3 is like my sweet spot. And I mean, you can push that at like 50 watts. Perfect. All right, let's get mixing. Love billet box. Well, let me know. Like, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm not going to like the flavor? It's uh, made by Asmodus.mod and billet box are way different. Oh, really? I mean, they look pretty similar. Just got my dot mod AIO from Element Vape for like 50 bucks. The coils it comes with suck. Waiting for the dot mission with billet boxes. There is flavor, but it's different flavor and overall a different vape. You're more likely than you're more than likely not like it at first. Requires a bit of testing to find it right. Yeah, that's what I that's what I've been hearing. Agree, completely different vape and takes a lot of tinkering. I mean, how different from the dot mod and how how different is the dot mod from the uh, from the billet box is it that much different especially when you can like deck out the tanks when keep saying dripper meaning mod yeah i mean like a like a not a squonk like a traditional regulated mod is really what i mean draining your batteries fully uses a cycle if you charge before then maybe around per yeah 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 you're supposed to do that with uh your lipo batteries too you're not supposed to completely drain them and you're not supposed to keep them. You're not really, you're really supposed to drain it to like 30, 40%, top it off, but you're not even supposed to top it off. You're supposed to stop it at like 90, 95 to really get the best out of your battery. Where'd you get the drip tip that fits the Hadeon cap so perfectly? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember where I got this drip tip. I have a whole box of drip tips that I've just collected over the years. I wanted to use the red one, the red one that I have, JMK one. Oh yeah, I forgot I had this thing. Where is it? So I have a cool red JMK drip tip that looks like a, it makes it look like a pop gun, which actually fits the desert color really well. Like this makes it look like an airsoft gun. All right. Pew 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 pew. I don't know if you can see that. But it doesn't quite fit the way that it needs to, which is unfortunate. I mean, can I should I put this thing on there? Nah, it doesn't really match. Hey, Josh Trips, thank you for subscribing. Tier 1 sub. Thank you, brother. Pro tip, write the date when you got the batteries on them. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. That is a pro tip. Many billet boxes or DIY builds seem to, seems to be a niche cult. Oh, it's a, certainly a cult. It's definitely a cult. The The... Which is why I really appreciated the people that were telling me like, dude, you're not going to like it. Because <laughs> there was a lot of people like, oh my God, the billet box is the best thing ever. I love it. I spent $2,000 on my setup. That's why I love it so much. And then the other, like the people that have, like the people that told me, they were like, to be honest, dude, like it's a very specific type of vape. The reason you get one is because of its convenience. It's all in one package. And, um, you know, they're fun to build it with, but if, if flavor is your thing, then obviously it's not the best thing. I didn't use my billet box. RDA is best for flavor and vapor. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to get the dot AI out and we're, and I'm just going to see like, if it's that bad, if it's really that bad, then I'm, I'm probably not going to get a billet box, but I'm going to get one of those, uh, dot ones i'm surprised wayne likes squonking so much i can't get past this smell stained squonk bottles well i um i mean sometimes it's a problem like some bot like some of the bottles that came with the 
I don't remember. I got a few bottles that are like really bad. Like you just if you get a good bottle, it doesn't hold on to the aroma. And it really has nothing to do with the material. It's really just like the way they manufacture the bottles. Sometimes some of them have like a smell to it that can affect. I mean, that I found affected the flavor too much. And then just swapping them to ones that are a little bit better. I haven't had issues. Like these have been great. Uh, the ones with the Squiva have, have been great. Actually, the dot mod ones have been probably my favorite ones. The dot mod squonker. The, too bad these like fucking break so easily. Oh, maybe it was the pulse ones. Like these pulse bottles were pretty bad. They stained easily. You couldn't. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I know what you mean though. I would get a billet or a stash box. Yeah, I kept hearing people telling me to get a stash box. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I was looking at melodies. I really want like a, a another melody. I would love to like, get like a DNA 60 melody or something or a DNA 75 melody. We'll see. Rage has good bottles. Yep, yep, yep. A lot of people love the Rage ones. He spent 1200 on his billet. Wow. Can't wait to order my Entheon. Yeah, this is the Entheon. I have the Entheon on here with the Hadeon cap. So it's a Hadeon. I mean, it looks clean, right? And actually, I had it with the, uh, I had it with this on there. I had it with this on there. Which fits it perfectly. Like, it just fits the Haiti on it like I don't know if you can see but those lines come right underneath those airflow holes but I mean that looks pretty clean it's a nice mod matchy matchy all right Yeah, I don't remember where I got that beauty ring from. Maybe it is it. Maybe it is a cyclone beauty ring. I don't know though. I don't. I don't know if it is or not. I don't know. There's so many like those weird vape things that you just collect over the years, right? Let's get mixing. Let's get mixing. That's the Entheon beauty ring. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe it did come with it. I mean, it fits it perfectly. All right, let's do the apple fritter foist. Okay. How do I know if my recipe submission went through? I saw it. It showed up on the screen. All right. We're going to do the apple fritter first. So we got jungle flavors biscuit. Which is, where is it? Right here. One percent of this. Cinnamon Danish. I mean, this is a very traditional apple fritter. Cinnamon Danish swirl at one. I mean, this is like two percent. If you do a one point nine, you might as well just make it two percent.
Country Apple, 2.3. Okay, interesting. Country Apple is a mixing cheat code. What are your new bottle recommendations currently? What do you mean by uh, bottle recommendations? Like glass bottles? Get Fuji Apple at 0.9. Uh, my take on root beer float. Oh, nice. Very nice. Half a percent of joy. Rich cinnamon at point two. Sugar cookie at 1.6. And then we have cupcake, 2.3, very odd percentages here. I guess it's just to make it an even number, right? I guess. I don't know. Any super sweet? No super sweet. What do you guys think of the camera angle? Do you, should we go back to the over the head? I just feel like this is better. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I could probably zoom it in more. Nice yellow apple pie color. Oh, by the way, I wanted to let you guys know. Someone in the Facebook group made a post that said, congrats, Wayne, on your first child. And I swear, like, I had, like, five different family members contact me and say, like, oh, my God, did you guys have your kid yet? We didn't have the kid yet. I'm not sure why this person wrote that. <laughs> I was I'm assuming they were just I'm assuming they were just saying like congrats on like I I don't know, I guess like just in general. But um it was funny, like confused all my family. The angle is good, but don't get rid of the overhead. Oh, okay, so you guys like the overhead better? I mean, maybe I can try zooming it in. Let's see real quick. Maybe that looks a little bit better. I mean, we could really get some like close ups too. We'll see how it goes. Sugar cookie looks like it's from 2016. Probably is. It's. I, I don't go through a four ounce ever. <laughs> I like this way better. I can see it better. I like this way. I can see it better. New angle, better new angle. Yeah, this is a better angle. Yeah, like I feel like the overhead is good for, it's not good for mixing. It's good for like product stuff, but like mixing, it's just, I feel like you just don't, you can't really see it as well. No one can see the super sweet numbers now. <laughs> yeah, the Dukes are nice, man. They're, they're well made. We'll see the durability though, guys. Like you guys know, I break my mods. I, I'll break high ends. I don't give a fuck. If it sucks, if it's not durable, if the shit on the inside is made shittily, I will somehow find a way to break it. So we'll see. Smells good. 
I mean, I really don't. All right, let's let's just taste it before I make any. I can already kind of guess how this is gonna taste, which is the thing, you know. Okay, yeah, exactly. I can already like kind of taste how this is. How this is. Let me read your quote here. My favorite donut. There aren't many recipes around. Any of those I've talked to on Reddit, Discord, really have tried so many combos, really felt like they nailed it. I tried after a couple of years and gave up after I made a good apple five months of tries. Many flavor orders since, and I think pure cap flavor spoke, hence the reboot. CDS is much lower than other recipes I have seen for apple fritters. My initial failure were due to low, due to how high CD, CDS steeps, in my honest opinion. FA Joy helps bring the doughy center. JF Biscuit helps strengthen the bakery element up against all the other components. This, I felt this was required after CS percentage. Cap sugar cookie rounds it out with a nice sweet mellowness that that this comfort food embodies. A truly a bakery hack ingredient. Cap cupcake is solely cap cupcake is solely used for the icing component. It stands out well to give a layering effect. I can't pick up much else from this flavor. Country apple is a very solid cookie apple with a little spice that melds with the CDS and eventually with the rich cinnamon added once the steeping is complete. I add flavor rich cinnamon four to six days in, and as I swear I can degrade other flavors over time. FA Fuji is the brighter apple. Uh rich cinnamon. Okay. I mean, this is interesting because you're saying like the other recipes. Like it is refined. It's just certainly a refined flavor. I don't think the joy is necessary, but this is certainly a refined flavor, which is good. But to be honest, like it's so sort of like predictable and kind of boring. It's kind of boring. It's that same sort of like it's the same. It it's really not much different from any other of like those apple pies, which is why I think your comments are are interesting because you felt like those recipes didn't really bring much to the table. Where I find like this is kind of falling in line with those recipes, like the. the it, the, the cinnamon Dana swirl Fuji apple, you know, it's like it's been done so many times. The country apple, yes, it does help give it a little bit of like a yellow apple tinge to it. But it's also buried beneath sugar cookie, cupcake, and biscuit. And then the joy kind of adding a little extra like doughy flavor, like uncooked dough flavor. Not really the most exciting recipe. Not really the most exciting recipe. It's balanced well. It tastes nice. Yeah, balanced well. Tastes nice. I just don't know if this is something that I would go out of my way to mix up. And I think you could absolutely improve upon this. It's pretty soft, too. The flavors are quite soft in this. Um, really needs a Steve to get going, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine Steve probably helps this out. How could we, how, how what, what advice can I give you here? Like what I would, what, what I personally want to see from like an apple pie, apple fritter is more like to me, what really makes the apple pie is like that gooey, like reduced sort of baked apple flavor, like the glue that kind of holds all the apples and the pie together. Like that aspect of a of the apple pie, I think is where a lot of apple pies fall short. They don't really figure out a way to encompass that like sticky, super sweet, uh, very nostalgic type of flavor. And I don't know exactly how you would be able to to get that in this recipe, but I know it involves, you're going to have to kind of pull your bakeries down a little bit to really let that apple sing. 
because I really don't feel like you need to do much with pie crust. You know, I, I feel like you could just probably get away with the biscuit and the sugar cookie. I don't think the joy and the cupcake are, are really necessary. And if you can kind of figure out, I mean, that's what I would personally want to see from an apple pie. Fritter is like 75% donut. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really get donut from this though. I, I get more of like a pie crust. I get more of like a unbaked sort of dough from it, which I guess is kind of a donut. I don't know. It's just, to uh, this is the problem. It's so, like I was saying in the beginning, it's so similar to like all the other apple pies. Like I really don't see what is different about it here. I don't see what you're doing different. I mean, other than the country apple, but I've tried, I've done, app, I've you know, I've done apple pies and apple bakeries with country apple before. Um, so it's not like it's adding anything. It's not like you're, it's not like you're accentuating that aspect of the recipe. You know, you're really just kind of relying upon this donut base, this sort of bakery base to sing. And then like the, there's, there's no sort of like driving factor. Uh, like I was saying, it is a refined flavor. Like the balance is nice. I think that the apples are balanced in there pretty nicely, but they're, I don't know if you, I, I don't know if I would have went that route. I probably would have made it apples a little bit more present and pulled those bakeries down a little bit more. I just think it needs a little something. It needs like a zing or it needs something to set it different from a lot of the other CDS apples out there. That's, that's the main profile that we're picking up is the CDS and the apple. Yeah, I definitely get more of like an apple pie vibe from it too. Yeah, I, I think if you can figure out a way to get that apple glue, whatever that is, that baked, reduced apple, baked apple syrup shit that holds that pie together, it's sticky and it's also, it's got like a nuttiness to it, right? It's got like this kind of like baked nuttiness that's just, it really sets off an apple pie and it makes it so much more identifiable and distinct, I think you can kind of really get something. I, I mean, I know you're going for like an apple donut, but I don't think that this is a recipe that's going to get you there. I think if you're going to try it, maybe try like a Zeppeli mix or something. I kind of get more of like a pie from this vibe. But I mean, again, I'm so, if you're going to do apple, CDS, and rich cinnamon, to me, that's like, that's so like a, uh, ubiquitous with apple pies you know it's really hard to kind of break that distinction using those ingredients I'm not saying you can't but to me you know it's it's really really ubiquitous it's i mean that's uh, that's an apple base that's used in so many apple bakeries mainly apple pies all right let's see let's see let's see where can i get a diy starter kit D uh, liquid barn yep liquid barn is where you want to stop Apple pop might help. Yeah, actually, apple pop might be a good idea. Yeah, a some something to kind of set it off, set it set it different. Set. I don't know. Maybe the fact. Maybe what's happening here is that they're just too. It's it's. I think you need to make something more unique about the recipe because it to me, it's so similar to a lot of the other ones, and there's so many like, uh. There there's so many recipes that utilize that exact sort of profile that it's really hard to make any sort of distinction so if you're going to go down this route then i think you're going to have to figure out a way to like add something to make it more unique and sacrifice i guess where you're trying to take it i don't think you're going to be able to go apple donut using just those ingredients like just balancing these out i think you're going to have to start to kind of dig into like a different type of uh recipe 
I mean, maybe you can go, I don't know. That's a different, maybe try like an apple cider donut. Maybe trying to go that route. That might help you try to get more accurate to a donut. Maybe trying to, or going the opposite route saying, you know what? Maybe we just need to figure out a different type of bakery note here. Flavor Granny Smith. Apple apple filling. Yeah, apple filling might be uh, an ingredient that you could utilize there. Yeah. High CDS always came off as a sin roll to me, which fritters use as a donut component in bakery shops. Yeah. Well, the CDS is like, to me, a CDS, you can kind it's it's kind of malleable because it does kind of have like that un that has like a doughy or flavor to it. Yeah, I think yeah, I think what a lot of people are saying, like maybe some try try utilizing some of those flavor flavors. But then what you're gonna do, I mean, you're not gonna get a fritter. You know what I mean? You're gonna go more on the pie route. I don't know, you just need to figure out a way to kind of break the mold i don't think this recipe breaks the mold you're not really doing too much of anything different cds fuji apple even joy like there's so many recipes that go with that with joy and then rich cinnamon by flavora i mean that's just like a ubiquitous apple cinnamon apple bakery base and to utilize that is fine but to try to make it taste a little bit more unique is the difficult part. That's where the difficulty kind of comes in. Maybe try more buttery aspects. Maybe instead of jungle flavors biscuit, maybe try Inuera's biscuit or maybe a different type of like buttery, buttery sort of a uh, bakery there. Maybe trying different apples. I mean, is the cupcake even necessary? I feel like it's not really doing much in this recipe. It's hard to say because it's I didn't vape this without the cupcake, but I feel like like the apple seems to like be pretty subdued in here. All right, let's rate this. This is kind of difficult. Let's go ahead and rate this. I think we're just going to give you a pretty average score here. I just don't see I don't I I personally don't get a recipe that is anything above average. I'm gonna give you a two and a half out of five here. Again, sort of just like a baseline. It's very ubiquitous, really not doing too much. My personal route would be to try to figure out how to make this a little bit more unique. You might be sacrificing on the fritter, but I mean, it just doesn't, I mean, if this works for you, then it works for you, but I don't see how this differs from like the C of other apple CDS rich cinnamon recipes out there. It really just doesn't do too much different for, uh, in that aspect. Pretty, pretty average, I would say. A pretty average recipe. Pretty average recipe. Promise to try next Wednesday after steep. I can't, I can't do the steeps, guys. I can't do steeps. Um, I will take your word for it. I, I can promise you this is probably better after steep. I will take your word for it there. I can just taste it. I can taste how this recipe will be after steep. But I just don't see how it's going to fundamentally change the recipe in any sort of way. Um, I think the, the bones of the recipes is, is kind of what you need to work on here. And this is a good point to bring up. Like This is where a lot of mixers... Like, this is what really... This is where mixing really kind of takes its own, like where your creativity will lie, right? Because that CDS, apple, rich cinnamon base has been used in so many recipes. Like that's not an original idea that you had. That's like a straight up, you know, plug and play type base. So the your creativity will come into how do I take that base, the fundamentals of that base and infuse it into a recipe to make it more unique to, to, to really showcase my style, but also be accurate to what I'm trying to do. That's really where that difficulty lies. That's what really can showcase the creative way a mixer can utilize his experience to portray an, ex to, to portray an experience. Um, and that's kind of what I want to see to you. So I promise, I mean, you resubmit, you know, you come back and you try to pull, pull something else together. I mean, I have no reason to think that you can't improve upon it. 
I think the bones, though, of the recipe will essentially have to be... Because this is refined. Like, this is about... I don't see how more refined you can get. But I just don't think that that's the issue. The refinement of the recipe is really not the issue. The issue is it's kind of just fine. It's kind of... It's an apple CDS rich cinnamon recipe that's a little bit doughier than some others. You know what I'm saying? And it's also quite thin, but that just might be the lack of the sweetener. But it is quite thin. Okay. And maybe the steep will help with that as well. All right, let's move forward. Moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, BK. What is your mixer name here? I don't know why ELR does this. Um, Biaco. Biaco. Thank you, Biaco. Biaco. Biaco, I expect to see a revision in the next coming weeks. Moving forward, let's go to... We're going to do Event Horizons last because that utilizes some wacky shit. And we're going to do Damp Fly in here. This is a weird looking one. Not ex especially excited to mix this one. Not especially excited. But uh, we'll see here. Let's see how this goes. Let's see how this one goes. What do you think with recipes if you... What do you do with the recipes if you don't let them steep? What do you mean, what do I do with them? What about apple pie filling? Yeah, Baker's Touch. You don't like Baker's Touch? Yeah, Baker's Touch is... It's got its, it's, got its uses, I think. The problem with Baker's Touch, though, is that it's you need to use like a lot of it, which kind of really limits what you can do with it. Like, I, I, like people, I see people using it at like one percent. I'm just like, nah, it's not really gonna do much at one percent. It's a practically a one shot. All right, damp flying here. Let's go. Let's mix up some damp flying. Some damp flying. Do you throw them away or vape the mess? Yeah, there's no, this is all shaken vapes. All shaken vapes. We do not allow steeping. That would get way too complicated. And so if you're submitting a recipe that absolutely needs a steep, I suggest you just submit a different recipe. So no way I'm mixing recipes up and then waiting three weeks to come back to it. That's crazy. That's craziness. All right. Now, if your recipe needs like a day or two, there's a good chance that like I'll be able to 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 know that. You know what I mean? Like I can account for steeping. Vape, boys. Vaping a long time here. But I mean, like some like if it's a tobacco or custard or something that relies on like a legit like two weeks steep. Baby, my motherfucking vape, boys then it's probably not a good idea to submit. So you're using Greek yogurt here. Wow, Flavor's Greek yogurt at 2%. Okay. Bring me my motherfucking vape, boys! Wow, Hearns gifting five tier one subs. Thank you, Hearns. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Much love. Bring me my motherfucking vape, Bring me my motherfucking vape, boys! Okay, half half a percent of mango. Special. Bring me my motherfucking vape, boys. Flavor Arts Arctic Winter. Hold on a second. Is that a half a percent? Do you think you could add a segment to another show like Friday Show where you try recipes out from midweek that have steeped? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. I'm going to be honest. There's only been maybe a handful of recipes that I've tried where someone said it's better after a steep and it was actually better after a steep. Like, tr like change the flavor completely. You know what I mean? Maybe three or four times that's ever happened in my entire career of mixing. Usually when people say you got to let it steep, usually I find that it just gets more muted and more muddled and maybe a more, uh, maybe a bit more thick. That's usually the case. Now there are some ingredients that I can admit, ad admit like, yeah, you should probably let that sit a little bit longer than a shaken vape. But I'll let you know if I see them. Is there super sweet in this? No sweetener in this either, okay. Sweetless show today, sweetless show. Like, I don't want to say steeping is a myth because it's it's clearly not. But I also think people, uh, maybe they rely on it too much. Maybe it's become more of a crutch. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's become way more of a crutch than it ever should have been. I mean, if you go back to the recipes of like 2014, I mean, there's dozens and dozens of recipes where people were people were literally unironically telling you to to not vape it for months, saying this is a great recipe. After seven months, eight months, twelve months, that's an unironic thing that people were saying. Like how how much different could the recipe possibly get from? I mean, you're, you're just letting it degrade at that point. You know what I mean? You're basically saying this recipe is better after it degrades in the sun and in the, you know what I mean? After all of its volatiles have died out. Or you could just like change it a little bit. <laughs> you could also do that and vape it immediately. I don't know. Maybe I should do it because... Another thing about steeping, we don't even fucking know what it is. No one knows what it is. Don't let anyone fool you. No one has an answer for what steeping is, nor what it does. Not even Penn State's fucking food chemist, you know, top guy could tell me what it is. All he told me was that sometimes in food chemistry, magic happens. Literally what he told me. And he's the only one in the vaping industry that I'm aware of. Um... So, like, that's the other aspect of it. Like, it's also just, like, this magical fucking fairy that is, like, like how do you even... Uh, what is it actually even doing, you know? Like, is it even actually doing what we expected? Like, when you say let it steep, maybe really what you mean is, like, let it do something else. Or, you know, maybe you're, what you're saying is, like, maybe let the strawberry volatiles that are normally pretty present die out a little bit because maybe the juice isn't even really steeping in the way that you think it's steeping. I mean, it's just, there's just so much unknown with steeping. 12 months deep for, for a homeopathic vape. Yeah. After the baby, you're going to taste things differently. Really? Is that something that happens to men? By chance, you mixed up my sour strawberry apple belts by chance and what you think. I have not. I mean, if you want, you could submit your recipe to the show. I'll mix it up if you submit it to the show. I don't know how many times I have to tell you this, Chris. For next minute, you should make an exception and do Christmas steeper recipes. As a father of a five-year-old, no changes in taste. Do you mean like taste as in like clothing, my taste in clothing or my taste in music? That type of taste? Cause then I could kind of get it besides like cat VC one. Don't think anything needs more than a month. I don't. And I would say, I would even push back. I would say, I don't think anything needs even more than like two weeks tops.
besides like capella like like sure yes there are some exemptions where these ingredients like they absolutely just they've just changed throughout time no matter what for sure bc1 being one lots of tobaccos are that way for some reason not all of them though like most of Flavor's tobaccos do not need to steep we're talking like Inuera tobaccos, like like TFA tobacco. Older kind of tobaccos are the ones that you really kind of have to let them sit. But Flavor kind of was like, we figured out how to do it where you, they don't need to sit. They're, they're the way they are, right off a shake. Ooh, this smells really odd. So let's try it. Let's put it in the Aegis, actually. I don't want to taint, taint my Duke with this recipe yet. So you can see it's like, Cranking this fucking thing is a terrible idea. I need a new battery. Bring in my motherfucking vape, boys! Space Dezen. Sp spice. Spicy Dezen. How do you say your name? Thank you for your sub. It's much love, much appreciated. Thank you to everyone who's subbing over on Twitch. It's could give, bring a tear to my eye. Never would I thought you guys would be subscribing on my Twitch. All right. My two rivers tobacco is good off a shake and better after a week. Uh, maybe this needs to be rebuilt. Maybe I, I'm going to have to try it in my Duke. When I click the blue drip, it says that I can unlock a random sub. What is that? Is that what I use? Maybe that's the unlock a random emoji thing. All the baby powder and clean baby skin makes you taste things differently. Oh, Hearn gifted it to you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Hearns. You're such a kind, kind person. I try to email you recipes. No, that's not how you submit recipes, Chris. I tell you how to submit recipes in the beginning of the show. <clears throat> Chris, do you even watch my show? Let me ask you. Do you watch my show? I'm just busting your chops, brother. Okay. Damp flying. Interesting. Here's the recipe. Creamy milky at a half. Cream fresh at, a, at one. Greek yogurt at two. Mango Indian at a half. Menthol at a half. Shisha mango at one. Strawberry ripe at one and a half. White Knight is a well-balanced mix of creamy yogurt with semi-ripe, not-in-your-face mango complemented by sweet strawberry at the end. <gasps> this is all in all gives a quite smooth vape experiences whereas it reminds me of a well-tempered mango yogurt replace arctic winter with any kind of cooling agent as you prefer test it on the hadley thank you for your testing notes sir much love much appreciated i mix based on no steeping i as do i unless again i'm using like a, a rest uh, an ingredient that does require steeping which is very rare like two or three ingredients. But something like, I'm not going to lie. Like, like for example, like, um, what's one that I just recently did where I was like, I, I have to let it sit a day or so. Um, I don't remember what it was, but I was like, I have to let this sit a day or so because I'm also just like, when I, throughout the day, like, Whatever you eat, you know what I mean? Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you vape, just kind of sits on you. And sometimes you vape it after a shake, you're just like, I can't even really know what's going on right now. I need to let it sit a day so I can kind of reset, you know, so my palate can kind of sleep a little bit. Then I come back the next day with a clear palate and then I'm able to really discern things. Not so much letting the me flavors meld together or whatever. Steep on custard premium. The day, two days. 
you know, one day, two days. Let it sit overnight. Let it sit an hour. Like, give it an hour steep. It doesn't have to be weeks. It doesn't have to be months. I don't have Twitch. Yeah, I mean, you can you can email it to me. Uh, I never got any emails from you. Maybe you're sending them to the wrong email. Uh, I mean, you can also... You could just go to Twitch. I don't know. You don't have to have a Twitch. You can just go to Twitch and sign up for an account. It's free. You don't have to, though. I don't want you to think you have to. Feel free to send an email. Rate my recipe at DIYOrDieVaping.com. Just know that the Twitch is how you submit. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, this is interesting. Okay. Uh, this, so, a well-tempered mango yogurt, I would say, is correct. This does taste like a well-tempered mango yogurt. That's about as correct as I can really put it. Yes, it tastes like a well-tempered mango yogurt. <laughs> Good job. You did it. You created a well-tempered mango yogurt. Yeah, it's a well-tempered mango yogurt. Now, the thing is, is like, is that, I, is that really... Let me try to bring in some mixing theory here. Is that really what you want to vape though? Like a well-tempered mango yogurt? It's good and it's fine. And it's at very accurate to that, I will say. But I think you could actually get away with just mango Indian and Greek yogurt. Maybe not even Flavor Greek yogurt, TFA Greek yogurt, creamy yogurt by Capella, any yogurt to be honest. Because that's really the main notes that I'm getting. I'm getting yogurt and I'm getting mango. Am I getting like anything other than that? I don't like, I think you could really consolidate this mix if that's what you're going for. If that's really what you're trying to go for is a well tempered mango yogurt. I would like to personally see a little bit more. I, I feel like I'm copping out again. Like, I want to see something unique about this. I want to see this recipe kind of not well-tempered, and I want to see it wildly tempered. <laughs> if that's a word, if that's a phrase. I want to see it like crazy wild, you know, uh, mango yogurt. You know, because well-tempered mango yogurt, yes, you did a good job here. And if I'm going to rate you on that, you, you know, you're going to get a, a, you're, you're going to get a, a good score there. But I, I want to push back on that a little bit because I feel like well-tempered mango yogurt is kind of an odd profile to kind of seek out. And I don't mean like you need to go crazy and have all these accents and stuff, but this is not something new. It's just like a very simple, that's basic to me. That's basically saying like, I wanted like a, a mildly mannered strawberry cream. <laughs> Does that make sense? Am I am I making sense here? That's kind of the vibe that, that a vibe that I get from this. I'm getting like a sure. This is a very sort of like okay. This is a mango yogurt. Maybe you could maybe focus on like the hyper real. Maybe make like a really hyper real mango yogurt if that's the route that you want to take it in. You know, really try to nail the accuracy of like a creamy yogurt, like a yo play yogurt with like little mango morsels in there. Because if this is, this is just like, to me, it's just like, it tastes like you put mango Indian next to yogurt. It really doesn't taste must up. doesn't taste much else different from that. Now is the strawberry ripe doing anything? I, I would say there's maybe a touch of strawberry in there. But like I was saying, it's like, you might as well have you know, submitted, this is a, <laughs> this is a, you know, a completely melancholy honeydew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I 
You want an angry mango yogurt? I don't. I just I just find it interesting that this was a uh, that this was like the profile. You know what I mean? But it's good. It is good. Like this is the thing too. Like the mechanics are there. The theory is there. The balance is there. Everything about the recipe is nice. Let's just give you a score real quick. Cause there's no point in scoring this. Like I don't think the score really means much in this recipe here. We're also we're gonna give you a little bit higher than average. We're gonna give you a three out of five, just because I do particularly like the addition of the menthol. I think the menthol does help kind of uh, give it a little bit more uh, of presence than if it wasn't in there, which is normally how we see yogurts. We see these without without menthol in them, but. I think if, I think finding some sort of like driving factor or some sort of like unique property in your profile and trying to attain that I think would provide a much more exciting, more memorable, you know, recipe rather than just like a you know, mildly mannered melon. <laughs> yeah, I I I'm, I'm going to give you a, a half a point. This is a 2.5 all the way but a half a point for the addition of the menthol and it's balanced well. Like the mechanics are there. There's really nothing wrong with the recipe. I don't get any off notes or anything. Nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, well tempered, I guess. Yeah. If you're going to mix my cinnamon roll, I have some changes at. Uh, at same percentages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fine. It's a fine recipe. You did a good job. It's fine. Now, in terms of like rating it as a clone, I can't help you there. I've never tried damp. I've never tried checkmate white knight or whatever the name of the recipe is. Uh, I'm I'm rating it based solely on its own merits as its own sort of recipe here, which I think is how it should be rated anyway. All right, yeah, I really don't, I don't have much else to say about it. Unfortunately, it's really just like I'm. The biggest problem here is the profile. the The profile is the issue. Um, it's just you know kind of like okay, this is nice. It's nice. I don't really have much else to say about it. You know, I'll probably forget that this recipe exists in about a week. But it's nice. Okay. Now let's try something a little off kilter. Something a little bit that has a little bit more unique property. Something that we don't normally see too much. That's why I wanted to put this one on here. This is also a new recipe. But it's from Stir Crazy. Who I feel like we just recently reviewed. But maybe I'm going crazy. I don't, I don't remember. It's been a couple weeks anyway. If it is, I apologize. I will do better. I will do better. All right, let's mix this. We're gonna mix this 10, 60, one milligram, 100 nicotine strength, okay. All right, I'm gonna get my bottle. This is a mediocre, melancholy grape. <laughs> what did you mix up today? Well, I mixed up a completely average, forgettable cherry. Oh, good job. All right. So here we go. Event Horizons by Stir Crazy. This contains absinthe by TFA at two and a half. Two and a half of absinthe here. Okay. Interesting. Oh, I need one more drop. Early vaping was heavy on the backers, which need a month in many cases. TFA was top bulk supplier and some other line needed weeks to get rid of the nasty off. Yeah, the yeah, TFA was the 
the one that comes most to mind when it comes to like steeping tobaccos. Um, like the decangs. Um, this is 0 0.75 black current. Yeah, a lot of those older tobaccos are not the flavor ones. The flavor ones are basically shaken vapes. Oh, we're doing mint here. Red cherry. Love Mullenberry's red cherry. Red licorice. Tart cherry. Sweet current. Point two five. So like literally a tiny touch of it. Perfect. Perfect amount. Super sweet and a half. super sweet at one and a half. Wow, a lot of super sweet. I'm going to just do one. I don't need to do that much. You guys have to remind me to call my dad on Friday, okay? By the way, his babies should be here for any moment, uh, any moment, guys. God willing. We're really just waiting for her to make her arrival. You know, technically we have like two, two and a half weeks, maybe even less. Um, but that's usually just like she, she can come anytime, which is exciting. Can't wait. Can't wait. That's pretty darn impressive. It is. It's impressive. All right, here we go. That's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> Are you streaming the birth? Should I? Should I live stream it? Will Twitch kick me off for that? I think my submission is kind of average yogurt, but I'm willing to take advice on how to make it better. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Send it in. Get ready for many sleepless nights. Oh, yeah. I mean, I kind of get that anyway. It's not much different than my normal sleep schedule. I'm ready to get this over with also being like we've had to quarantine basically this entire time guys which has been the worst you know because if you know pregnant women are more at risk uh i think because of blood clots because there's a higher chance of blood clots when you're pregnant and then covid like really makes that a high chance so that's one of the reasons and it's like at least after when the baby's here like you don't really have to worry about the covid with babies and you know we we're not we don't have to be completely fucking locked down all the time especially like now it's like the problem now it's like if i if she were to get covid or if i were to get covid and she went into labor i would only be allowed there for the birth and then that's it and then i have to leave right after the birth happens like i wouldn't be able to stay there with her 
which is fucked. But like, I understand why they do that. But like, that you basically have to quarantine for like two, three weeks before, be- two, three weeks before there's a chance, right? Because like the baby can be here in like the next two weeks, but like we have to quarantine two weeks before that, so all like an entire month, essentially. You know, and if you really wanted to play it safe, like even longer, like if I, if we were to really play it safe, we'd, it wouldn't have to be even longer. Color looks better on here than YouTube. Oh yeah. YouTube's compression is terrible guys for live video. This smells crazy. This smells crazy. Ooh, tastes great on the hand. I'm getting a check battery, a check battery already. All right, it's a dark, mind-blowing, sweet licorice concoction. The absinthe is kind of heavy at the first shake, but eventually creeps its way into the mix during the steep. What you get is a very satisfying treat. Not everyone's going to like this. It's pretty dark, for, and for a lic, lic and for the lic, it's pretty dark, and for the licorice aficionados, suggested steep is about a week, but it's still enjoyable after first mix. Enjoy stir crazy tested on a ghoul RDA. The ghoul, goblins and ghouls. Remember that episode of Always Sunny? They're like, here's when Charlie was, uh, they were b- building a uh, dating uh, dating profile for Charlie. And they were like, what are your interests? He's like, ghouls. Goblins and ghouls. What's your favorite food? Milk steak. I kind of want to remake this because I used peppermint and I rather, I think I much, I should have just used menthol. It says user defined here for the mint. He used real flavors mint. I probably would have just went menthol. Let me redo it real quick. Let me redo it really quickly, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I used the wrong mint. I don't know why I chose peppermint. gonna go menthol here i like where it's at already but i just want to i want to put a different mint in there give me one second that absinthe man that absinthe is really underused schmeg four Question, what RDA are you using? I am using the Hadeon. The Hadeon. Not Radeon, Hadeon. I mean, I could probably go WS23, but I'm I'm still out of it. I didn't re I haven't made my reorder yet. Red cherry. Oh yeah, let's get some red cherry in here. The vengeful one. What are you uh, vengeful at? So, Chris, you now you have to watch like at least two or, I don't know, maybe three shows before you accumulate enough points. And then once you have the points, you head over to the link. And that's how you submit your recipe for a critique. Gabish, thank you, BK. Sweet. 
super sweet. That's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> I've never had um, um, absinthe. Uh, the liquor. I've never. I've never tried uh, actual absinthe. I have had a scissor act. Maybe I have had absent. I'm pretty sure if it, oh, change battery. Oh. Yeah, I've I've had a scissor act, I'm pretty sure. But I don't think I've had absent. What's up, Twitch? I mean, what's up, Heat? Yeah, we've been on Twitch for like a year now. Killing the Twitch game, dude. Yeah, man, maybe we could do a beatbox competition in the future. That was fun last time we did it. It was like five years ago, it feels like. It's like the guy never streamed a day in his life. I know. Thought it was one of the three Hadley's, Entheon or Hadeon. Do you still use Citadel? Yeah, I do. Uh, not as much as the... Um, Hadley. I've been I've been on my Hadley kick for like the past few months. Pretty much vengeful against the world. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess there's a lot to be vengeful at. Keep yapping, man. Sorry, sorry. All right. Let's try this out with a menthol instead of mint. Much better. Much, much better. Yeah, it's darker. A lot darker now. Yeah, this tastes great. Now, this is... Whoa. This is my advice to you, Stir Crazy, as a licorice aficionado, which I've become over the years. I don't think it's dark enough. I think it is a little too sweet still. I think you, and I'm doing it at a half a percent of super sweet. At one and a half, I can only imagine. Um, I think what you should do, the sweet current is kind of necessary here, but I, I feel like if you can make it a little bit deeper and darker, it would actually really help this recipe out. It's great the way it is. So this is for the licorice fans. You know, if you're not a licorice fan, you're not going to like this at all. I don't know what else to tell you here. But it's like a black licorice, absinthe um, type profile. It's just one of those types of profiles. It's great. I love the blend of the tart cherry with the uh, licorice. It gives off a little bit Robitussin vibes. It's a little bit of Robitussin vibes, which is kind of why I want to see it deeper. Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to see it deeper for that reason. I'm going to have to rebuild this. I think this is a little too low.
yeah, I kind of want to see it a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit more, a little bit more on the absinthe. I think where it's at now is really good, but we're starting to get into that realm again of like, we have to figure out how to make this a little bit more unique. It, you know, this tastes very similar to like a lot of like the berry licorice blends that we've tried recently. Um, of course, cherry kind of helps it out a little bit, which I like, but I don't think that it's enough to really kind of separate it from the mix. I think focusing more on making a more apparent absinthe licorice flavor would really help push this profile along and just deepen it more just deepen it more, darken it more. I love the noise when he inhales. I never get that from my mods. Why do people say that? You're not the first one that said that. I feel like I always get that noise. That crackle. I mean, maybe because I always use the fuse Clapton's. This is good though. This is good. I like it a lot. This is up my alley. I like how it's not a random sort of like fruit blend. There is an idea to it. You're going to take the prize here. You're going to win for the week. You're going to take the prize. I'm not going to score too high though. This is a low scoring show this week. Three and a half out of five. I think if I scored it a four out of five, I'd be kidding. It's, it's just not a four out of five. It's barely a three out of f three and a half out of five, but I'm going to give you an extra nod because you are at least utilizing some mixing theory in, in, in this recipe here. Uh, again, I just want to see, I personally would like it deeper, but I just want to see what else you can do with it. It's a little too safe. With licorice and like licorice berry blends, it's really easy to play it safe and play to like just like a Heisenberg type flavor. We've all done that. You know what I mean? Anyone that tries these types of vapes, we've all kind of went that route. So I kind of want to push you to try to like push it a little bit further. Like, can you bring a different type of nuance to this mix that we haven't tried yet? Can you bring some sort of like different type of like fruit nuance to the mix that we haven't tried? Um, I like where it's at and the, the mechanics are nice and there are no off notes, which are, which is pretty surprising. Can, you know, it, it is a tough profile that always brings like some type of off note and I'm not picking up any it. Well, it does kind of go on the borderline Robitussin area. You're almost at that line. Yeah. You're like right at that line. It's not bad. I wouldn't cl classify it as like a Robitussin flavor, but you're close to it. So just be careful of that. It's good though. It's really, really good. I need to use more of that absinthe because it's fun. It's like a Jaeger flavor, to be honest. It's kind of the vibe that I get from it. It's like Jaeger. A Jaeger flavor. Yeah, maybe it just had a, a more natural licorice to this or a, some sort of like something maybe some maybe it's missing like a spice i feel like it's just a little too sweet and a little too candied if you can spice it up a notch that would really help out separate those cherries bring out some of that absinthe a little bit more and just kind of like you know give it some stage just like you're really kind of tightening things down it needs a little bit more stage absinthe jaeger equals anise yeah yeah i guess that's <laughs> i guess that's correct I guess that is correct. Mm. I like it though. I like it. It's a fun vape. Three and a half out of five. I know I, I, I stand by that. You know, I'm being pretty generous with it because I like where you're going with it. If I was going to really kind of like heavily score, you'd probably get like a 3.25 out of five in that realm. Maybe even a three out of five. But I'm gonna give you three and a half out of five. I think it's a little bit above average. It's good. It's good recipe. It's a good recipe. Okay. That's that. That's the show. That's the show, everyone. We did it. We got through it. We did it all. Three new recipes on the board. 
You have recipes of the year coming very, very soon. Very, very, very soon. I know I promised it this week. It's just not ready yet. Um, mainly because I started working on the tutorial video that I was talking about. And that's kind of eaten into it. But I'm just taking my time with those rest those, those videos. There's really no rush on them. Um, and that's pretty much all that I have really to look forward to for you guys, other than like the live shows. I mean, you have a couple other videos that I have planned. I just haven't shot them yet. Uh, a couple articles planned haven't been written yet. Um, it's really just trying to get this recipe of the year list out as well as this tutorial, which is hopefully good. Hopefully it's good. I'll try to make a Sizzorak e-liquid. What is a good whiskey flavor concentrate, please? You know, I like Kentucky bourbon. I like, what is it, Flavor West whiskey. There's a lot of good ones. You really can't go wrong. I mean, I, I can't think of one that was, that's was that been bad. I'd, I'd probably stick to, like, Kentucky bourbon. I'd probably go, or maybe even, like, Flavor West whiskey. That's probably where I'd go with it. Okay. Any last questions, comments before we leave? I don't think so. I don't think so. I've leveled up my second character on Path of Exile. I haven't fought the Maven yet, though. I'm too scared. I just don't have the gear. I'm trying to get to the Maven fight, but I need the gear, which takes a long time. I use Flavor West Fire Whiskey in my root beer float. Oh, nice. Let's think. Anything else? Anything else that I can let you guys know? I was on Kevin's podcast last night, uh, VP Live. We talked about we talked a good deal about media, and we disagreed. So he was saying that. So this is something that I kind of want to. I don't know I kind of want to pose the question to you guys because I push back against this notion. But if you were to say who, what political party controls the media, what would you guys say? Just spam it in chat, and I can promise you, you're pretty much all going to say Democrat. Which political party dominates the media? Just what do you guys think? I'm just curious to know what you guys think. Because I, I I disagree. If you say Democrat, I disagree. I would disagree with that. And I'll tell you why. Good luck on the baby. Thank you, man. Yeah, lots of Democrats, right? I mean, that's just like the, that's like the meme, you know, it's a meme at this point. Democrats control the media. But. But if you look at the numbers. That's just not the case. It's just not the case. So like, it's all fake news. It's phony it's stuff. Fake news, correct. It didn't happen. It's perfect. Nice drop. It is all fake news. They are all fake news. But I mean, let's just go on YouTube, like independent news media, which I'm starting to think is a bigger issue than mainstream media, which I never thought I'd say. But if we look at the independent news media, it's dominated by the right. It's dominated by Republicans. It's funded by Republicans. Steven Crowder, Dave Rubin, Tim Pool. These are the biggest media personalities on YouTube. They get the most numbers consistently. And that's just the three main ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, there's so many of them. Um, and then we kind of talk about, and then we go to Fox News. And that's just, the, it's the number one, you know, syndicated news show. Number one, they get, they get the best ratings. I don't know how, I don't know if that's true now, like today, but I know it's always been true. It's just never even been close. I think this year has been a little bit different just because of the whole, I mean, well, now there's OAN, now there's Newsmax that a lot of people kind of jump ship to. 
you know, you can have your opinions on that, but nonetheless, nonetheless, I mean, it's, in my opinion, it's like 50, 50, it's like evenly split. It's evenly split now. And I would even go so far, like no one really watches CNN. I mean, at least no one that I know, none of my family members, all my old aunts and uncles, they don't watch that shit. Anyone that I know that watches the news, watches Fox news. If you watch like CNN, I mean, I mean, maybe there's a subsect of people that watch that, but the numbers don't reflect it. Um, and then like, I don't know, MSNBC. I mean, that's like market watch. People watch market watch, but it's not really like Democrat run news. So that was something we argued about. That's just something that I've been thinking about recently with media because we were arguing. The point that we were arguing in his podcast was that he was saying that something there needs to be some type of regulation on these news places because it's the news has gotten crazy right the the fact that the news like just for instance like the news can say like in terms of vaping you know vaping uh is not is, is just as bad for you as smoking which we know is to be objectively false right but that is a main talking point of the cdc the ala the aha like that's their point that's their own sort of point. And those are main groups. And they are, you know, they do take grants and shit from the government. Um, and say the media says that. I mean, it's essentially you can, you can say that like, hey, they, they're just getting their information from the government. So like, that's where I push back. It's like, you can't have the government regulate media because then you get into that aspect of the government and regulating media which we don't want. You know what I mean? We do not want the government to regulate media. That in my opinion a terrible terrible idea. Terrible idea. But we also just can't have the media be as crazy as it is. Like what is the answer? Like what is the answer? At least with and this is why I was saying like I'm starting to push back against independent media because I'm starting to find out at least when the mainstream media has something go wrong, like a bad story goes out, or they get some sort of information wrong. I think there's more accountability for them to correct themselves than there is on some sort of like Joe Schmo, like a Tim Pool or like a Joe Schmo YouTuber. They don't have to ever correct anything. You know what I mean? They don't ever have to come out and correct anything. Um. So that was, I mean, I just been thinking about the media. Like how do we go about in the vaping industry? How do we go about changing the perception of vaping through the media it's a it's an age-old question an age-old question it's a very difficult complicated thing and for years the vaping industry has taken a libertarian approach we're all adults and we all should be able to consume any product that we want and what that's gotten us is a completely regulated industry <laughs> it's gotten us we didn't get too far with that message. So if we were to try to change that message, I'm starting to think like if we change that message, we, because then we were talking about his idea for a new advocacy group. And if we were to change that message to an anti-tobacco, like a like basically stealing PAVE, basically stealing that idea, but pro-vapor. Not even pro-vapor, just anti-tobacco in the sense of like, look, we know that vaping is safer than smoking. There's just, it's definitive proof that vaping is safer than smoking. And we want to eliminate smoking no matter what. Truth and all these other companies that take money from big tobacco, they've had decades to get this message out there. Now we can actually make effective change doing that. And we just, that's a different type of messaging. That's a different type of messaging than we should be able to do whatever we want with any other, on any substance that we want. Like that type of messaging while I agree with it, I certainly agree with that that idea that I'm an adult, I should be able to consume whatever I want, and I should be able to sell things that other people want to consume. I completely agree with that. Unfortunately, that's just not working. That that's we haven't got very far with that, you know. We haven't got very far with that. Government is a terrible idea. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like uh the idea of government? Yes, I agree. <laughs> we should abolish government. 
I'm all for an anarchist state. So that was a discussion we had. So if you're interested in that, we talked about it in full on VP Live last night. That was fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Um, mainstream alphabet channels are all far left. Yeah, I mean, you have like CNN, you have NBC... And then I guess you can say you have ABC. Does AB, does, like, does anyone watch like ABC News? But then again, it's like no one, no one really watches that. The numbers really don't reflect people watching that. So yes, yeah, like they are, they do own that, but like no one really consumes that media. So they're basically like, you know, does a tr- does a tree fall in the forest if no one can hear it type thing. It's a t- it's a tough answer. It's a tough question to answer. What do you do about like do you do you apply some sort of like punishment if a media story is wrong? But then again, like all you have to do is just say it's opinion. It's just so stupid. It's just like an impossible question. It's an impossible question to answer. If you want free media, you're just going to have to deal with the media lying. That's just how it's going to be. Because as soon as you add regulations to that, that's it. That's the end of free speech. That's the end of free speech. You can't put one regulation on the media. The only regulations that we have from the media are defamation uh, defamation regulations. And I guess like copyright stuff, but that's not really f- for free speech issues. But like defamation stuff and like those are so difficult to litigate. So difficult to litigate. You might get one in every 10 years someone can successfully litigate a defamation lawsuit. From the against the media, maybe one one in every thirty years. So you can't regulate the media, and you can't. And like we know, what happens when the media can just say whatever they want. I I don't know. It's such a tough thing. And like I'm starting to I'm I'm becoming more on the boat where it's like. I don't even like listen to half of these independent news. That used to be all that I listened to. When I would go look for news, I wouldn't go to CNN or anything like that, New York Times. I would go and look at like, I would just research it on Google and like look at fucking whatever's out there. But nowadays it's just as bad. There's just as much bullshit and just as much lies on that. You can't trust anything you read. It's out of control. What do you do in this situation where everything you read is a fucking lie from everyone and everyone does it on all sides? It's really, really frustrating. And then we were, then he was talking about, like Kevin was talking about, like we, we need a, a, a publicly funded like government news source, <laughs> like a state media, basically. That they put out the information, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, but that, that would, then you get state media. You know what I mean? Like, how is that any better than anything? State media? It, there's no answer. There's no answer. There's no answer to this dilemma. We just had got to deal with it, I guess. We just got to deal with it. Your media is corporate. It presents viewpoints that sell ads. Oh, well, that's what I, yes, 100%. That's what I was telling him. That's what I was arguing to him. I was like, the reason why the media has been railing on Trump for the past, like his idea was that Trump has been getting railed on by the media because there was some conspiracy to get him out of the White House. No, 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 no. The media was railing on Trump because people read those articles. (laughs) Because people read those articles. They wanted every little morsel of information because he was that hated by the left that they couldn't get enough of reading about all of the shit that he was doing. That's why they were writing this article. They didn't give a they don't give a fuck. They'd rather him be in office for the next 30 years because they were having record numbers, record views, record profits. These news companies have couldn't have been better in the last four years. You think they want to give that away just for what? Because to put another fucking old white guy in the White House? They don't give a fuck about that. 
They want to make money. And that's how they did it. That's how they did it. So I was asked, I was like, where, like, what do you think they're going to do with Biden? No one's going to fucking give a shit about who's going to read a story about Biden, you know? But now we're seeing the right put out like, you know, the the same thing Mama, that was happening from Trump on the left. They're doing that to Biden on the right. So I guess that's how they supplement it. You know what I mean? I guess that's the one way they supplement the uh, their income. Okay, four years, the left can make money. The next four years, the right can make money. That's how they're going to keep it in business. It's crazy. It was a fun discussion because it, it, there's really no answer. There's really no answer. You can't regulate the media. You just can't do it. Imagine the government says, okay, we're going to punish people that tell stories that are wrong. Okay, well, then we're all out of business. The vaping industry is out of business. I can't have a vaping channel. You can't watch any of the fucking shit that you want on YouTube, whatever you watch. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have any regulations on media or speech or anything like that. Just can't be. So you just got to deal with the media lying all the time. I think essentially what will happen, this is my like optimistic idea. I think essentially what will happen, people are going to start to get so sick of just not knowing the true story of anything that there's going to be a company that comes along that puts out some sort of news source that everyone just agrees like, oh, okay, well, this is the best news source. And we're all just going to listen to them for at least maybe four or five years. I think that's what's going to happen. Because I do read some stuff that I think is objectively true, but I mean, you never really know. I just think that they're right. You know what I mean? But you never know. We all think whatever we read, we read and that we take in is correct, but you never fucking know. They can regulate social media, kick out those, but yet they can regulate social media, kick out those they don't agree with. I mean, the government can, is what you're saying? I don't think that's true. One big issue is so much info, whether true or not, that you can't tell what's fact. Yeah, that's another good point. Yes, exactly. There's so much information. I mean, take any story in the last fucking 10, take any story in the last four years. There are so many different viewpoints and different ideas and different conspiracies and different truths. What do you know? Is, what's like, how do you know what's actually correct? You just got to trust that what you're reading, you know what I mean? You just have to have that level of trust. But yeah, I think like eventually there's going to be a point where people are just sick and tired of not knowing what the truth is. That there's going to be a room to profit. It's just how do you get to that? I don't know. That's something a media company is going to have to figure out. But they'll make a lot of money when they figure out that answer. The system is fucking corrupt. That's all there is to it. Amen. It's not corrupt. I don't know if corrupt is the right word, guys. It's just so profit driven. I guess that's corruption, you know? I, I mean, I I guess it, the dollar corrupts. It's, it's just like when when everything is so profit driven, it's really hard to to get away from the extremes. Well, you know, that's just how it's going to be. Unless they start make like unless media companies can fun, get funded get funded not through clicks and whatever, just through I don't know. It's a fun conversation though. The GameStop stock. Oh yeah, I was I was talking about that earlier. Crazy, man. So what's crazy is like there there's been I mean if you go in the subreddit Wall Street Bets, they're looking at like the SEC is like following that subreddit and they're all saying like, "Look, you know how much like insider trading is going on right now with these hedge funds? Why aren't you taking care of that?" The fact that just people can influence a stock because they want to. The reason that they're 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 raising the GameStop price is because they like the stock. That's it. You know, there's no underlying reason as they don't want they don't want to pump the price up just to short it. They actually like the stock and they want to push it up. And of course, now that it's going up, more people are going to jump onto it. And they're squeezing all of these hedge fund guys out and now they're all fucking crying like I mean, it's an amazing story. I cannot wait to see what happens on Friday. That's been a blast to watch.
Stick with reading direct quotes and or actual audio video of person's words or actions. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's the best way. Yeah, but the thing is like you can't, no, I don't know, because you can't, you, you don't have that at all times. You know what I mean? You, chat, you, you can only trust on, you can only trust hearsay. Like you just don't have like someone's, someone's like words all the time. Like especially like a politician's or a company's words. So it's really, you just have to trust like the people and the, those that are investigating them for whatever reason are telling the truth. And a lot of the time they're not. That's what sucks. They're, I mean, the media's got a lot of issues right now that they're going to have to figure out. But they don't have, but they don't have to because they're making so much money. People are clicking it and reading it like crazy. So I guess whatever they're doing is working at the end of the day, right? At the end of the day, it's working because they're having the best fucking years of their lives. Oh, well. Oh, well. At least we'll be here mixing our juice. Mixing our licorice juice. That ain't, that ain't stopping anytime soon, right? That ain't stopping anytime soon. Let's wrap up the show. Thank you all for tuning in to Midweek Critique. I love you all. I'm going to see you guys Friday for live mixing. We're coming back. We're mixing up some stuff live. Good show. Thank you all. This was fun. Thank you for all the submissions. And make sure... You submit your recipes if you want to get reviewed. Next week, we talked about next week's. Um, so be ready for that. And yeah, I don't want to have much else. Bye, guys. Bye.